standing in Tadasan mountain pose, lengthening the head towards the ceiling, elevating through the spine. Shoulders are soft, legs are soft, feeling the feet into the floor. Inhale, circle the arms to the ceiling, into prayer above the head. Exhale, forward fold. Two breaths here. Step the left leg back to runner's lunge. Position the feet. Push on that right leg to lift up, arms by the ears. Settle in here. Maybe the back knee is bending, maybe it's straightening. I like to explore my hips, forward and back a little. Gentle tuck under, roll forward. One more breath in. Exhale, hands either side of the foot, step back to plank, either off the knees or on the knees, chaturanga. Elbows bend, body lowers, high plank to low plank. Knees and hips can come down, up face dog, upper body lifts up. This back bend here in the body. Breathing through the nose. Even just exhale to come down to the floor, reposition hands if you need, push back to tabletop, lift to downward dog, pedal through the heels, or be nice and still. Lift that left leg high, three-legged downward dog, turn the toes to the left. Exhale the knee to the chest, stepping the left leg forward, runner's lunge, right hand takes part of the weight, Left arm lifts to the ceiling. Simple twist. Lower the left hand. Shuffle the back foot a little closer. Pyramid pose. Body just resting over that front leg. And then just gently take the weight a little bit further forward. Right foot meets the left. Forward fold. Two breaths here. Inhale, roll up, circle up. Hands to prayer above the head. Come back down to the floor. Forward fold. Three breaths here. Next breath out, the right leg goes back. Runner's lunge, then push on that left foot, left leg to help lift up into that nice, deep, standing lunge. Maybe the back knee is bending. Maybe you're straightening, squeezing that back glute. Just explore how that body feels, how the hips are. One more breath in, lower to the floor, hands frame that foot, step back to plank. High plank to low plank, chaturanga. Knees and hips lower. Upper body stays lifted. Up face dog. Draw those shoulders away from the ears. Even slowly roll forward first. You can reposition the hands under shoulders. Tabletop, downward dog. Feel that stretch through the legs. Raise the right leg high, turn the toes out to the right. Next breath in, draw the knee into the chest, step the right foot forward. Runner's lunge, left hand takes the weight, raise the right arm, simple twist to that right leg. You can look up to the top hand, out to the side or even down to the floor if that feels better for the neck. Lower the right hand, shuffle the left foot slightly further forward, hips lift, pyramid pose, body's resting over that right thigh. Slowly bring that left foot forward to meet the right, forward fold, inhale, roll up to stand, arms by the ears. And just bring your hands back to prayer at the heart. Just standing for a few breaths. Awesome. 
and it will work into the postures. So our first pose today will be the mudra for harmony. Creating a mudra with the fingers, point of finger, either wrapping it under the crease of the thumb or touching the end of the thumb. The other three fingers are outstretched and straight. Right hand is going to be turned up as well as the left, right on top of left, creating a triangle with those arms. And if you look again at the body, we've got a triangle with the legs. If you need to have the hips higher on a bolster, please do. So we work mudra for harmony. And you can do this with the eyes totally closed. As we take a breath in, arms move forward, out to the side, palms face the walls, fingers in line with ears. Exhale the right hand above the head, left to anchor you into the floor. As we work with that harmony for self. As we're reaching those two polarities of the higher self and the physical being, the physical self. And as we draw those two polarities together at the heart, thumbs and fingers can touch, palms go wide, facing up, and exhaling, this time left hand over right. Next breath in, hands go forward, out to the side, palms face the wall, fingers in line with ears. Exhale, the left hand above the crown, right hand anchors you into the earth as we reach up for harmony with others, as we identify and recognize the higher self of others, as well as their physical being in that physical dimension we all live. And as we draw those two together at the heart, thumbs and fingers touch, palms wide, exhaling that right hand over left, and that beginning point. Final round, inhale the arms forward and out, giving out to the universe, arms face the walls. Exhale both hands above the head, the thumbs and fingers touch, creating a triangle. So you reach up for harmony with all that is, with the universe. So inhale the arms wide, out to the side, then exhale, this time pointing down, so we earth all that extra dimensional contact as so we reach out to the world and bring it back down and anchor into the earth. Release the fingers over the knees, even wriggle the fingers resting there in that energy, the mudra. And then we're going to lay down and work with a supine twist, working on the spine. So you can choose, you can bring both knees in, arms can go wide out to the sides and dropping the knees to the right to begin. Maybe you've got a cross of the legs, right over left or left over right. That left arm can be out to the side, even turning the head the other way and taking some breath in this deep twist as so we work that energy from the crown all the way down to the sacrum. In essence, those two polarities, our Muladha, the base chakra, and Sahasra, the crown chakra. As you inhale and exhale, even experiencing or feeling, or even just sensing energy moving up and down this energetic spine in the body, Shashumna. And the next breath in, we'll release the legs, bring them back up. If you want to do the twist again, you can do left over right or right over left. And now dropping the knees out to your left. Again, getting into a comfortable position for that supine twist. 
You can look over the opposite shoulder to where the knees are pointing. Tuning back into the spine. On that physical level, we're opening up the nerves, the connections with the brain via the spinal column. Again, you can visualize or even just try to sense in that subtle prana, that life force moving up and down the spine. And next breath in. We'll slowly come back to center and just stretch the legs out on the floor, palms facing up. Just allow yourself to be still. And again, resting consciousness awareness in that spine. As we take those deep breaths in through the nostrils, we help charge the body with prana or life force, that storehouse at Manipur, at the emotional center, which will now work to bring more energy into via the bridge or chakra sun, the wheel, your choice. So I'm going to work with the wedge. So hands, if you can, run them down the front of the legs to ankles, bringing those feet close to the hips. They can be nice and wide apart or even just having palms on the floor. Gently push on the feet to lift the hips. Maybe you're raising the heels, bending the elbows. All these are options, variations. Supporting the tail or lower back. Breathe deeply into the abdomen. Allowing that belly to expand and gently contract. And then slowly let the spine roll down or if you're in bridge or chakra sun, coming back to the floor, stretch the legs out, even just gently turning that head side to side. And being still, awareness, consciousness anchored in the body. And then we're going to slowly sit up. So either rock your body up or roll to the side, coming back to a seat. And we're going to work with the forward fold, but today with the white legs. And then we're going to bring, if you can, that left foot in. For those that have that flexibility, maybe you can sit with that ankle really pushing in either to the perineum, just gently squashing, in a sense, this sexual glands, a sexual area, creative gland area. And we're going to turn to look at that right leg. Inhale, lift the chest, fold over that right leg. For those, if you need to have arms under, maybe you can reach and stretch for toes more active, or just being nice and passive, releasing. As we breathe here, there'll be compression across the right side. As we work Svadhasthan, that creative center. Again, you can bring awareness, consciousness into the sexual glands or into this area. Basically in the pelvic bowl, the sacrum is that sacred glands. That breath, if you can, flowing in and out through the nose, face and teeth and jaw are soft. Gently inhale, we'll gently come back up. And we'll turn to the other side. So right heel, right leg will bend in. 
left leg out to the side. Again, if you can sit even with the heel on the perineum or close into the groin. Turn the body out to the left, lift up. Exhale, forward fold over that left leg. Again, aiming to get a compression of the left side, the abdomen, maybe in the creative area, the sexual glands. And softening into the shape. So you work this other side, still focusing on Sputterstun. slowly come up just releasing the heel maybe the feet can come together just resting here for a moment even if you want to forward fold nice little butterfly knees just letting that abdomen release again keeping energy contained in the body moving consciously mindfully Coming up. So today we're going to work with the bundas, the Uriyata Bunda, where we pull that stomach up and back in the cat shape or in tabletop. So the idea here, as we've done the other day in other classes, we're trying to take a deep breath into the abdomen. It expands. As you exhale that breath, you let all the breath out of the mouth. You pull the stomach up and under. And even if you want, you can gently curl and dome the back and that will help squeeze the intestines, the pancreas a little bit more. And we'll do this three times. So you can start more neutrally if you need to wriggle first. Take a deep breath in, even gentle arch as that belly expands. Exhale all the air out of the mouth. Start to dome the back. Keep the air out. Suck that belly up and under. So pulling the belly button back to the spine without breathing in, you're holding this. Maybe the chin is coming into the chest. And then when you're ready, release that lock. Either gently arch again, looking up. And then coming back to center. If you need to wriggle, two more of these. So nice deep breath in, belly expands. Exhale the air through the mouth. Keep the air out, start to dome the back, pull the stomach, suck it back up and under, holding this shape without air, without breathing, until you need to again. When you do, deep breath in, come back to a gentle arch, you can look up, and then release, let the breath come back to neutral, and the body too. Final one, nice deep breath in, belly expands out. Exhale all the air out of the mouth. Then pull that belly back to the spine, suck it up, even dome the back, drop the chin, creating that throat lock as well. When you need to inhale, release the lock, look up, deep breath in. And then we're going to lower all the way to the floor, laying flat on the ground, even turning the head to one side, that crocodile position and letting the breath, the body settle. So as we just worked with Manipur, that sort of storehouse of prana, of life force, we're now moving up into the adrenals, or more into the back of the body, into the adrenals there, the kidneys. They say that they are related in essence to that muladha, the base chakra, our survival instinct. We'll work there now. So hands under shoulders. Today we're going to do the cobra. As you inhale, lift the head and shoulders up. Float the hands, shoulders draw down away from the ears, even squeezing the glutes to lift the feet. Holding and breathing. Some people like to rock a little. As we gently squeeze into those kidneys, even focusing the mind, awareness, into this 
part of the body, that lower back region. If you're working energetically, even at the base of the coccyx, that base chakra, there is a connection here via nerves. And slowly lower. Just bend the knees, letting the feet just windscreen wipe side to side. And then just coming back flat again, releasing to the floor. So I'm now going to work with what I call the butterfly arm. It's a beautiful shoulder stretch, but it actually gets into the heart meridian that runs along from your elbow, from your fingertip, across the heart center. So we're going to start with the right arm first. So the right palm is out to the side, elbow can be bent. If you're doing the straight arm version, the arm is out like a wide V. We're going to look away from that hand, head is on the floor, and just gently pushing over onto the right hip, keeping the head down. So you start to feel that stretch across that right shoulder. So maybe that top leg, that left leg, goes back and touches the floor. That can take you into a bit of a lower body twist as well. And we're breathing here, and it's that breath in essence that's going to help expand the rib cage and also expand that area, that region where the heart rests in that chest cavity. And slowly roll forward, and we're going to do the other side. So left arm, either the palm is out nice and straight like a wide V, or the elbow bends, fingers facing forward. Turn away from that arm, so onto that left side of the head, pushing over onto the left hip, so that right leg will lift up, maybe you can touch the floor. Holding here is the experience that stretch through the left shoulder, as you breathe, we're helping to expand and keep that focus in that heart area. So the chakra here is Anahat, helping to, in essence, allow that area space, bringing energy, awareness into it, so that we can give and receive more often in a much more balanced way. slowly come back to center just resting the head on fingers far can reach down under those fingers or turning the head to one side and then rolling over for shoulder stand so onto your backs For those coming into shoulder stand, those feet are lifted, hands, arms and palms push down into the floor. The abdominals will work as you gently kick the feet up. Elbows bend to support the tail, holding the shape. Maybe you're on a nice wide diagonal. Maybe you're walking the hands down the back, feet shoot up to the ceiling. Hips are coming more in line with the throat. So you breathe here. For those that are doing the gentle variation, can bring your hands behind the head, pull the chin into the chest, you're on your back, that elevation of the legs. Getting that squeeze in our communication center, our thyroid gland, Vishuddhi. It's where we express our creativity from. And slowly coming down, lowering gravity if you're in shoulder stand, knees close into the body. Release down to the ground. If you want to move straight into fish, you can. 
Otherwise, just laying flat first. Those that want to come along with me, I'm going to sit up, bring your hands behind, forearms come down and flat, chest is lifting to the ceiling, shoulders gently squeeze back and allow the head to dangle behind. Be cautious and gentle with the neck and just holding this shape as we breathe. Again, focusing awareness in the center of the skull, even the back of the throat. So we're targeting the parathyroid glands, but also starting to work into that pituitary gland, the center of the brain, the master gland of the physical body, helping all the other hormonal centers, hormonal glands operate, sending signals there when they need a pick-me-up or even a gentle slowdown. When you're ready, just gently coming down to the floor, lowering the body, release the hands, turning that head gently side to side. And it's just a counter stretch, you can even gently just hand behind the head, pull that chin gently into the chest once again, just to stretch where we've gently compressed. And again, allow the energy to move through the body, the rebound of the tissues, the recirculation of life force. And again, we're going to slowly sit the body up, either roll to the side or coming up. So a final shape, Sahasra, the crown center. You can do this in a shoulder stand. Today we're going to do it, I'll teach to dolphin. And for those that want to do just the gentle variation, it's just that wide-footed downward dog, allowing the head to dangle here. For those working with dolphin, the forearms come down. So they can start like train tracks, but your hands may move in, they may move out, depending on the shoulders, how the joints there sit. You push the palms and elbows into the floor, lift the hips like we're doing down with dog. You can let the head be heavy, making sure that there's no compression in the neck. The head isn't sitting on the floor getting pushed. Breathing here, focusing that crown center, the top of the skull, and even an inch just above the top of the skull, Sahasra. The physical gland here, the hormonal gland is the pineal gland, just above the pituitary, the center of the skull. Keep that breath flowing. And when you're ready, slowly coming down, just rebalancing, maybe just a gentle child's pose or resting the forehead, one or two fists. And then we're going to move into Shavasana. Nice and gently and quietly, allow yourself to roll back onto the floor. If you need support, a rug. Again, moving mindfully, moving consciously. Allowing yourself to come back to stillness. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, even lengthening the back of the head. Palms can be face up and out from the body. Feet flopping to the side. Aiming to let the body release and ease and soften and surrender. Feel totally supported by the floor, by the mat. Even take a nice deep breath in. 
inside out. Allow yourself to release and soften. Ease and let go. And gently, very gently, slowly bringing consciousness back into the body. Wiggle fingers and toes. Start to stretch the arms above your head. Lengthen fingertip to toe. Roll to one or both sides. Just arching the body on the side or resting in that recovery position using an arm as a pillow. Slowly push back up to a seat to close the practice. Comfortable cross-legged on the knees. Just gently turning the head side to side, chin to chest, out to each shoulder, and looking right to left. So take a deep breath in, raising the arms, hands coming together, bringing harmony and balance to the body-mind as we bring that to the heart for integration. And then we bowing in thanks for the teachings, for the practice.